Welcome back to the class on HVDC transmission system. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the starting and stopping of a DC link in HVDC system. So, before going to learn this topic, let me see the de-energization of the converter and energization of the converter. De-energization of the bridge. In HVDC system, there are two stations are there. One is the rectifier station and another one is the inverter station. Each station number of converters are connected in a series. Suppose due to any fault or something, if you want to remove the one bridge from the remaining part of the string means, that is nothing but a de-energization of the bridge. This we are doing by two steps. One is the blocking of firing pass to the particular converter. Here we have taken the one converter in this manner and converters are connected in series. Now suppose if you want to remove this converter then should not apply any pulses to these valves. That is nothing but a blocking. During the blocking there is some amount of current is passing through the valves. So the AC voltage will be reflected at a DC so that there is oscillations will be produced in a DC side due to the smoothing inductor and capacitance of a DC link. Moreover, the power is given to this converter through the transformer. So, so the secondary winding of a transformer is carrying a DC current. The DC demagnetization will be occurring. So not only blocking the firing pass to the walls, we have to bypass the current passing through the conducting walls. We are initiated the blocking so that we are not applying any firing pass to the SCR. At that time, we are assuming that S3 and S2 is conducting. Now we have to transfer this current to the bypass pair. Bypass pair is nothing but a, on the same leg two valves. Those are nothing but a bypass pair valves. Initially we assumed that the current is passing through the S3 and S2. Now current we have to transfer to the bypass pair S1 and S4. After S2, S4 will be on. That is natural. But after S3, S5 has to on. After that S4 has to on. Nothing but a, there is a some delay in a time between the blocking and bypassing of the current through the conducting pair. In this case how much time is delay means 60 degrees to the 120 degrees. How can you reduce the delay time means here we assume that S2 and S3 is conducting. So what are the conducting devices are there? Lower device that we have to take into consideration of the bypass pair wall nothing but s2 should be in a bypass pair wall so s5 will be on so that the current is transferred from the s3 s2 to the s5 s2 in this case the delay time between the blocking mode to the bypass mode is 60 to 120 degrees so once the current is transferred from the conducting valve to the bypass wall then you have to transfer to the isolators Nothing but here the, the two isolators, this is third isolator, now close this one, now the current will be transferred to the isolator in this manner. So when the current is transferred to the isolator, the no current is passing through the converter. Now we can remove this converter from the string where n converters are connected. But in case of a but in case of a inverter, inverter converter, there is no time lag between the blocking mode to the bypass mode. The waveform of the rectifier and inverter modes are shown below here. This is the voltage waveform for the rectifier. Here we initiate the blocking, but the current is come to the point here. But in case of inverter, here we initiated the blocking mode, the voltage directly come to the zero. Now this is the difference in a de-energization of the rectifier converter and the inverter converter. Energization of the bridge. Now, how we are going to energize the bridge? Nothing but eh? already the converter in blocking mode. It does not carry any current. Now, how we are going to energize the bridge? Here, there are two steps are there. One is the the current is always already passing through the isolator in this manner. Now, we have to transfer this current to the bypass wall. Suppose if you take the bypass wall with the S4 and S4. Now, first of all, you have to transfer this current to the S4 and the S4. So when the current is passing through the S and S1 and S, nothing but isolators, this current is very high. Yet. The current may not be extended by the S1 and S4. By that time, automatically this isolator should be on up to the some time. 
in that time the current should not come to the zero so once this current is decreases then you have to transfer to the bypass valve nothing but s4 and s4 once the current is carried by the bypass valve next we have to transfer to the conducting valve so in this manner we have to energize the bridge in rectifier the current is transferred from the bypass valve to the conduct conducting valve that will be happen instantaneously but in case of inverter converter there is some time delay is there so the voltage waveform of a rectifier and inverter that we can see here during the energization of the bridge this is the voltage waveform of the rectifier this is the voltage waveform of the inverter now how we are going to start up the dc link the startup of dc link is broadly classified into two, two types how the controller will be giving a pulses to the wall we can start up the dc link short gate pulse and a long gate pulse now we are going to see the startup with a long gate pulse firing we start up with a long gate pulse firing so first of all in this method the current extension in a dc link is not at all a problem during the startup of the dc link these are the steps what we are going to follow up to start up the dc link with a long pulse firing in the first step d block the inverter with the gamma angle is 90 degrees next d block the rectifier with a firing angle alpha equal to 85 degrees to establish a low dc current next slowly ramp up the voltage by means of inverter control and ramp up the current by means of a rectifier control now we are going to see the short pulse firing with a start up of dc link in this method dc link current is extinguished during the process it will create a problem to the link these are the different steps what we are going to follow to start up the dc link with the help of the short pulse firing the first one is the open the bypass switches in one terminal nothing but the current we are going to pass through the conducting wall next d block the terminal we have to d block it nothing but it can able to carry the current same manner apply the load to minimize the current in a rectifier mode next open the bypass switches in a second terminal and d block the second terminal as like a rectifier mode the inverter terminal put in a inversion mode those two terminals we are starting with as like a rectifier but finally we are keeping the inverter terminal as a inverter mode or inversion mode next we have to ramp up the voltage and current these are the steps what we have to follow to start up the dc link in hvdc system with a short pulse firing thank you very much for watching this video